Warning! This channel is for adults only. I do not condone any illegal activities, and everything I record is for educational purposes only. With that said, I'm gonna teach you how to grow some weed. This is a continuation of the top 10 mistakes that new growers make and how to avoid them. Number 11, growing bag seeds. Chances are, if you're watching this video, this might have been the spark that ignited your curiosity for growing cannabis. We all know the story, you get some fire bud, and you find some seeds, and now you're thinking you hit the genetic lottery. See, the problem is, experienced growers avoid pollinated buds at all costs. If there's seeds in it, there's pollen somewhere where that bud grew, which means there was likely a hermaphrodite that unintentionally pollinated the bud you found those seeds in. These seeds will likely produce plants that make pollen, which results in seeded buds that isn't as good a quality as unseeded buds. Yo, I got that Rice crispy smoke! <laughs> Instead, find feminized seeds from ethical breeders who stress test their crosses before releasing them to the public. Number 12, choosing autoflowers. Having the prefix auto will make you think that these strains are easier. But I'm telling you, buying and setting a $9 timer is literally the only extra work you need to do between autos and photo periods. The problem with auto flowers is that if you're using heavier soil, you will grow some dwarfs. To spend four months to yield less than an ounce is usually enough to scare a new grower out of this hobby. Worst case, if you're growing autos in soil, you want to cut it with something light and fluffy, germinate directly into your final pot, and use the biggest pot possible. For proof of this concept, check out the video linked on the top right. Number 13, starting multiple strains on your first grow. I think the true test to see if you're a great grower is to see if you can grow different strains at the same time perfectly. Like my grow me to grow under the stairs? Check his channel out for that Sub-Zero Frost. Damn, son. Different strains have different nutrient requirements and using the same feed schedule on multiple strains will likely result in excess or deficiencies. You'll have to know how to read leaves and respond to each plant individually to perfect a multiple strain grow. For a new grower, it's much easier just to focus on one strain, so don't drive yourself nuts with multiple strains. Number 14, using water only soils. People get sold on this idea that there's some miracle soil that could take a seed all the way to harvest. I'm sorry, but there is no such a thing as an all-in-one soil for cannabis that creates high-end bud. Bruh. Cannabis plants have different nutrient requirements in the mm -hmm. vegetative phase and the bloom phase. Mm -hmm. And if you ignore this, you will likely get small, uh. hairy, undeveloped buds. You need to understand NPK, which is the ratio of the main three elements cannabis needs, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Yo, Fortunately, optimized feed schedules exist and they're free to download on my site. Yo, you the man. Number 15, using pots that are too small. Eventually, plants will grow beyond a pot's capacity. When roots are compressed, it becomes harder for them to eat and they'll start to show signs of deficiency. The leaves thin and curl and slight yellowing is visible and unfortunately, the issues will only get worse unless you transplant to a bigger pot. 
This is why it's important to select the proper pot size. Which leads me to number 16. When you drop your lighting to 12 on and 12 off, a photo period goes into bloom. During the first three weeks in bloom, cannabis plants experience a stretch period, and if you don't factor this growth in, you may overcrowd your tent. All strains vary in the amount they stretch, but I find that indica strains grow about 50% of their size and sativa plants grow about 75. The roots will also grow proportionately, so you need to make sure that your pots can support this root zone growth. Videos on when to decide to flip are linked in the description. Number 17, not dropping the humidity in bloom. When you have overcrowded tents, humidity will become an issue. Gray mold and bud rot thrives in environments with cooler temperatures and high humidity. Without proper airflow, moisture in dense buds will result in bud rot, and once you see it, the spores are already in the air and it could spread overnight. Defoliating your plants and using a dehumidifier will reduce your humidity and help prevent bud rot. Your target for humidity should be around 60% in the beginning of bloom and around 45% towards the end. Number 18. Flushing is the process of feeding your plants plain water without nutrients to wash out what remains in the soil. Some say this essentially starves your plants, but the idea that there is no value to flushing is a myth. Let me clarify this for you. At week eight in bloom, if your leaves are still super green, flush. If they're yellow, then there's no need to flush because nitrogen has already been stripped either by lack of nutrients or a natural process called senescence. Just like curing, you're trying to reduce the nitrogen, which is one of the atoms in chlorophyll. Too much chlorophyll in your buds will give you that harsh, grassy smoke, and it'll take longer to cure. Instead of completely removing all nutrients, I either reduce or remove just the nutrients that have high levels of nitrogen. Flush only as needed. Number 19, skipping cure. I know it's tempting and I still sample buds, but realistically, I could tell the difference. The best analogy I could give you is that it's like ripening fruit. During cure, chlorophyll breaks down through a process called decarboxylation. Like I said before, this reduces the harsh, grassy taste in the bud, and the video on automated curing can be seen linked on the video on the top right. And finally, number 20. This is similar to number 10 in part one. Giving people samples of your bud starts off innocent, but it could eventually become an obligation. Newbies are also proud of their first grow and they just want to show off their hard work. The problem is, this is really work and there's expenses that come along with it. Sharing is fine, but sometimes friends start associating your friendship with free bud and if you tell them that you can't anymore, they'll think you're not friends. Instead of giving out samples, Ask them to help you with annoying tasks like trim gel or watering your plants when you're on vacation in exchange for your samples. One hand washes the other, and this is all stuff I personally experienced. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and hit that bell. Also, for 10 other mistakes, check out part one, and for the best tutorials on how to grow, check out my site, hwgrow.com. I'm gonna teach you how to grow some weed.